Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to High Media TV. I'm your host, Evan from High Media TV. And today, our top story of the day is a potential arms embargo to Israel. But before that, let's get into our top stories of the day. Local board members in Georgia cannot refuse to certify an election results, a judge rules. The Supreme Court revives case against citizen journalists arrested for seeking information. And Canada expels top Indian diplomats, links them to the murder of Sikh leader. Sorry about that. Donzel Stone from hell. Ugh. And into our top story of the day, if you want to see any of the stories that we touched on today, check out our, the, in, in more detail, check out our YouTube Shorts feed, as well as our articles channel on our Discord. Ugh. U.S. suggests military aid to Israel is at risk in letter demanding more aid for, uh, uh, for Gaza. The Biden administration sent a letter to the Israeli government demanding an act to improve the humanitarian situation in Gaza within the next 30 days or risk filing U.S. laws governing foreign military assistance, suggesting U.S. military aid could be in jeopardy. This the Sunday letter, jointly written by U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and, and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, is addressed to the Israeli Minister of Defense Yof Galant and Minister of Strategic Affairs Ron Dermer. This marks a significant step by the U.S. to try and compel Israel to facilitate the delivery of humanitarian aid in Gaza. They write that the U.S. has deep concerns about the situation, asks for urgent and sustained actions by your government this month to reverse this trajectory. Since the spring, the amount of aid delivered to Gaza has dropped more than 50%, and the quantity delivered in September was the lowest any month during the past year. The deadline falls after the U.S. presidential election on November 5th. Despite the stern warning, however, the U.S. has continued to provide military assistance to Israel, including an advanced air defense system, and U.S. troops begin arriving on the country on Monday. Future U.S. aid could be at risk, however. The letter dated October 13th notes that the U.S. State and Defense Departments under U.S. law must continuously assess Israel's adherence to its assurances made earlier this year that it would not restrict aid flows into the enclave. The U.S. list of demands is extensive. Israel must allow at least 350 trucks a day to enter Gaza through all four major crossings, in addition to opening a fifth crossing. Israel must also, over the next month, implement humanitarian pauses across Gaza as necessary to enable humanitarian activities, including vaccinations and aid distribution for at least the next four months. The U.S. is also demanding that Israel allow the people in the al Mawazi humanitarian zone inside Gaza to move inland before winter and enhance security for humanitarian convoys and movements. Israel must also take action to ensure that Jordan Armed Forces corridors are functioning at full and continuous capacity. The letter closes by calling for a new channel between the U.S. and Israeli governments to raise and discuss civilian armed incidents, with the first meeting to be held at the end of the month. Um, and Blinken Austin wrote that the Israeli government's actions appear to be contributing to the worsening humanitarian situation. No, of course, because you have to remember that Israel doesn't want to do any of this stuff. It doesn't want humanitarian aid to get into Gaza. They want all the Gazans dead. They want all the Gazans dead. They want them dead so they can take their land. That's it. Like they, they like it like it's a genocide, like plain and simple. And you know, um, you know, it's been it's you know, you, you, you like some people argue it's been a gen it's been like a genocide since October eighth. Some people argue that it's never it's been a genocide for a month like for a very short time. Some people argue since spring. I argue that ever since you know December. Like, you know, obviously Israel wanted revenge in their lick back, but at this point, this is the equivalent of, you know, the schoolyard bully getting punched in the face by the weaker kid, and then the schoolyard bully beating the ever-living dog piss out of the kid in, in, while screaming to the do to the, the teacher, I'm defending myself. Like, like this is where we're at. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to you want to talk to me outside of this video outside of live streams or just be a join the community and be a part of it you can do so at hibmedia.gg slash discord discord links there we'd love to have you and given the financial situation of the economy right now i know this is a tall ass but if you have the scratch to, to spare please consider donating and becoming a supporter at hibmedia.gg slash tip all of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing, and a dollar a month is a boot to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, and have a great day.